They forced us to take unknown pills and to drink some kind of white liquid. The pill caused us to lose consciousness and reduced our cognition level. The white liquid caused loss of menstruation in some women and extreme bleeding in others and even death. I also experienced torture in a tiger chair the second time I was detained. I was taken to a special room and placed in a high chair. Bands held my arms and the legs in place and tightened when they pressed a button. The guards put a helmet on my shaved head. Each time I was electrocuted, my whole body would shake violently and I could feel the pain in my veins. I thought I would rather die than go through this torture. I begged them to kill me. They insulted me with humiliating words and pressured me to admit my guilt. They told me my mother and son had, had died, my father was serving life in prison, and that my family was torn apart because of me. In another cell where I was held, there were 40 women aged between 17 and 62. When I left the cell after about three months, there were 68. Most of them were educated professionals, such as teachers and doctors. I witnessed nine deaths in my cell in three months. I cannot imagine how many deaths there must be in all camps, all the camps. In the camps, I met a 23-year-old woman named Patam Khan. Her crime was attending a wedding in 2014 that was held according to Islamic traditions, where people did not dance, sing, or drink alcohol. She said 400 people who attended that wedding were all taken to the camps. When she was taken, she had left her two kids in the field. She agonized every day about where her children were. One night, she suddenly dropped to the floor and stopped breathing. Several people with masks came and dragged her away. After more than three months in the camp, I came out and was again able to see my kids. Thanks to the help of many wonderful people, I was able to come to the United States. Words cannot describe how joyful I felt when I landed in Virginia two months ago. But I'm not completely free from my traumatic experience. After I, <clears throat> and I fear that the Chinese government, still, Ch Chinese government is still monitoring me. My brother recently left a voicemail on my cell phone. He said, in quote, how could you do this to your parents? What kind of daughter are you? You should go to the Chinese embassy right away and to denounce all the things you said about the Chinese government in the interviews you, you gave to the Radio Free Asia. And to tell them you love China. Tell them you were pressured by the Uyghur organizations in the US to lie about your detention and the torture in the camps. And to take back everything you said. Otherwise, China can get you wherever you hide. I'm trying to start a new life in America go to school and take care of my son and daughter. But now I'm terrified that the Chinese government could still threaten me from so far away. Please protect the Uyghurs in America from the Chinese government's threats. Please help Uyghur refugees around the world who will be taken to the camps if they are forced to return to China. Please take action to save the people who are being tortured right now. I hope the US government will take a strong action against the officials responsible for torturing me and the death of my little boy and the death of so many innocent Uyghur people. My people look to the United States as a beacon of hope. It is the only country that can tell China to stop its ethnic cleansing of the Uyghur people. I still remember the words of the officers when I asked what my crime was. They said in code, being a vigor is a crime. 